Well, the Washington establishment and its media lackeys remain obsessed with Russian hacking and its alleged influence in November's election. Some have even stooped to pushing an unverified document, a dossier, claiming Trump has been compromised by Russian intelligence. Russia's the biggest boogeyman it's been in years, but at the same time, few people have been talking about its actual thinking. What are Russia's motives, if any? What could they gain or lose by working with the Trump administration? In other words, nobody talking about this knows anything about Russia. But Stephen Cohen does. He's a contributing editor at The Nation and a professor emeritus of Russian studies at NYU. He used to teach at Princeton. Bonafides are long. He joins us now. Professor, thanks for coming on. So, what could possibly be on your mind tonight? Whether or not I, we're actually going to well, survive? Well, there was this amazing moment, and I'm sure you saw it during the Tillerson, Rex Tillerson hearings in the Senate, when Marco Rubio of Florida, a Republican, essentially demanded that Tillerson denounce Vladimir Putin as a war criminal. Yeah. Now, I don't know, I'll be candid with you, I don't know much about Vladimir Putin's war record, and perhaps he is a war criminal. I don't know. But I was so struck by Rubio's insistence that Tillerson concede that he was. Would America gain something, do you think, from an incoming Secretary of State calling the Russian head of state a war criminal? No, because it would end what President-elect Trump says he wants to do, and that's create a new policy toward Russia that we used to call detente cooperation. Yes. So we got a very simple decision in front of us. Uh, perhaps the worst relationship with Russia in our time, perils everywhere from the Baltics to Ukraine to Syria, to guys running around as you and I talk tonight, Tucker, terrorists, looking for radioactive material to make bombs that if they set them off, we won't be able to inhabit that pl those places for a generation. Trump seems to understand this. He seems to understand that we can't deal with these problems without Russian cooperation. And meanwhile, you get in this country uh, uh, already a, a, a bloody war against Trump, partly because he wants to do this. Did I hear Representative Lewis say on your broadcast a few minutes ago that he doesn't recognize Trump as a legitimate president? That's right. Because well, if that's of the Russia. case, what about the leaders of the, of the states Trump has to deal with around the world? Are they supposed to regard Trump as an illegitimate president? Well, Trump will have control of our nuclear arsenal, so I think they will take him seriously because they have no choice. But I'm wondering about the motive here. Obviously, some of it is to tarnish Trump before he takes office. But, but the antipathy toward Russia seems real from a lot of the ideologues involved yeah. in this. And I think probably Senator Rubio is one of them. And I'm not degrading it. I'm just trying to understand it. Why? Why are they so anti-Russia? With all the threats we face, why Russia? Well, in a word, and again, let me take the political Fifth Amendment. I'm not a partisan of Trump. I'm not a partisan of Putin. I'm a partisan of American national security. And they say these things because they do not know what they're talking about. They don't know the dangers. They don't know Putin's real role in the world. He is far from the greatest threat to America. Think back. Well, you probably weren't born then, but you know the history. Remember what Ronald Reagan did. He had called, he had risen to power, he had embraced the idea that the Soviet Union was an evil, evil empire. Then in yeah. 1985, for reasons, good reasons of his own, he decided he wanted to do a grand detente with the new Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev. And you don't remember, but I will tell you that his own party, the Republican Party, savaged him, said he was betraying the cause. I remember. Now, they, they couldn't attack his character as they do Trump. But can you imagine, can you imagine if Reagan had been so slurred in the American press? So I think Reagan is actually the model for Trump. Uh, at that time, it was the evil empire. Today, Putin is the Darth Vader of the East. It isn't true. I mean, the, the threat that Putin represents to the United States, I would rank, probably wouldn't make the, five, the top five, uh, the top five. But they're testifying in Congress that it's number one. Yes. And this, this, this is a threat to our own national security. Look, it does daytime. seem that way. Look, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry, we're we're out of time, but I just want to affirm, as a non-Russia expert, that what you're saying comports with common sense. It does seem like hysteria has seized D.C. But and we're we'll in out. danger as a result. It it seems that way. Professor Cohen, thanks all for joining us. Good to see you.